that this thing came to pass. This is not forever. This uh, uh, COVID-19 deal is, uh, is dead in Jesus' name. That's what we believe. We believe it's gone. We believe it's going. We believe it's not going to happen. We believe uh, that this, this stuff is going on, is, uh, is, is about to die. So hallelujah. We're just uh, thankful for that. But Hey, I'm just uh, thanking God for all you guys that are clicking on here. My gosh, Josh, the list just grew huge. There's Darcy all the way in Nebraska. Wow, there's Amy. Hi, Amy. There's Rick. Hey, Rick, good to see you, man. Ben, there's old Ben Conway, man. Ben Conway all the way from the UK. Good to see you, Ben. Uh, Bless you, man. I know things are going great at Tree of Life. We have a lot of good stuff happening here. There's Vito. Uh, we were just talking about Vito, weren't we, Art? We are just talking about you. Were your ears ringing, Vito? A lot of people popping on here. That's awesome. Well, let's get started this morning. I want to I wanna get started. I got a couple of things that are very, very dear and uh, dear to my heart that I'm going to share with you today. And uh, God is so awesome, man. He is doing so many things. And... Um, He's changing my heart, amen? How how many of you know that uh, all of us need a little heart change? And um, my heart has been being changed, and it's it's always being changed, and um, uh, things are... Uh, need to be changed. We need to change every day. If we don't change today, we'll be the same tomorrow. And uh, so God is working on us through this. And amen, let, let, let's make it a positive thing. You want to? I'm going to pray and get started here. Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name for all of our friends, all of our church that's watching here, all of the people that are uh, out there uh, watching us from all over the place. There's people from all over the world coming on here. And we are so grateful for that. We just thank you today that, Lord, you pave the way that you paved the way for this, this message. You paved the way, Father God, for every one of us to, uh, to realize who you are in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory, and the power of God working in and through our hearts. We thank you for it today. We believe you, we trust you, and we know that you're with us, and we know that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony not even loving our lives unto the death. We thank you and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. It's it's an amazing thing to to be able to do this. Um, I think this is one of the things that has made us go more tech. I know our guys were getting us on Facebook before. But I guarantee you, um, we, we, we're, getting, we're reaching a lot of people now. Uh, we can't wait to get our church doors back open. We will do that soon, and I'm believing that. But it's a great blessing to do this on Facebook Live. Also, I just want to tell you about giving. Giving's a big deal. Thank you, Ben. I know you're watching, so I can thank you right now personally uh, for getting us connected with Tithely. Tithely is our <coughs> giving program that we give through on the internet. You just go to giving on uh, godshappy.com. You can just go to giving right there and there's a little thing called giving and you pop that up right there. And there's a a little program called Tithely. You can give on there. It's an awesome thing. It works really good. Uh, Just go to that. We appreciate too. I have to thank everybody that's, that, that's giving. We have to thank you guys. Thank you for giving. We have not missed our missionary payments. We, uh, we, we call them our biggest bills is, is getting our money out to our, um, uh, our orphanage in um, Kenya to uh, uh, Tony and Rosa in Peru and all the, all the other people that we, we support, a bunch of missionaries. Uh, I don't know, there's 18 or 19 of them that we, we support, uh, not, not all the time, but our, our orphanages we support every week, and we're doing that, and it's an awesome thing. So uh, if you, you guys have kept that going, and thank you so much. Um, there has been a little bit of drop-off here on giving, so if you guys could uh, uh, help us with that, man, what's on your heart? Give from your heart. God's, God's speaking to you. And just give on tithely, or you can give to Mountain High uh, the old way. You can write a check and put it in the mail. Uh, you, you, you just send, make it out to MHC and send it to P.O. Box 123, 
Conifer, Colorado, 80433. And that's an easy way to do it. You can, uh, and again, give on tithely, however you like to do it, make it easy on yourselves. We just appreciate that. And right now, I just pray over everybody that's uh, helping us with the giving. We pray over every tithe, every offering. We thank you, Lord, that this is your money. This is your deal. And we thank you that you supplied all of our need to your riches and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So that's awesome. And uh, hi, there's Baron, Baron uh, Jennifer watching. How you doing? Good to see you guys. Rhonda, that's awesome. Claire, hallelujah. Good to see you guys. So many people popping in. Sure good to see you. Well, um, also, when you're watching this, it would be a great help to us if, you would, uh, if you'd share it. It's going to reach a lot more people. If you like it and share it, it's going to reach so many more people. It's incredible how it works. It's just awesome. And, and uh, people are watching us. And I mean, we're getting uh, notes and emails and people watching and people talking to us, texting us, telling us about it. And what a blessing that is. And so uh, try to help us with that if you could. We, we really appreciate it. I'm excited about today's message. Today's message, of course, is uh, one of the messages that, that tweaks my heart. You know, we all know that God deals with the intent of the heart. Our heart is um, the center of our being. It's where we live, and God's dealing with my heart on this. And uh, uh, I want to read a scripture to start off here. It's Galatians 6 and verse 9 in the New King James it says this, it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Oh man, oh man, what a deal that is. Come on, I'm going to read it one more time. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Anybody know that scripture? Come on now. We, 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 we don't want to lose heart. There's so many heart scriptures in the word. There's, a, um, I'm, I, it's almost a thousand or just a little over a, a thousand scriptures uh, mentioning the heart in the Bible. That's an amazing thing to me. There's a thousand of them. And uh, it, it, it's so awesome. It's so incredible to, to read these heart scriptures and to, and to let him deal with our heart. Our heart is... Uh, uh, where God's dealing with us. Amen? Amen. Hey, there's Sam and Vera on there. How you doing, Sam and Vera? Chris Tubbs is watching this morning. What a deal. Claire, amen. All these people. There's Brad and Sheena. Look at these people. Kevin, good to see you, Kevin. Uh, wow, Josh is on there, and I thought he was right here. Wow, you're amazing. Uh, there, there's Miles. There's Miles all the way out in, uh, in Hartzell. Uh, man, there's a lot of people. Autumn, Autumn Jubon. Good to, uh, well, I guess that's not your name anymore, is it? Hi, good to see you, Autumn. Good bless you guys. And uh, so good, good to see all you guys clicking in here. We love it. We're glad you're on here. But I just read that scripture about dealing with the heart. I'm talking about the heart here this morning. And when, when, when we, there's a lot of scriptures. I'm going to go to a couple more. Let's go over to Proverbs. I want to, I want to hit a couple more um, scriptures here, uh, just heart scriptures. And amen, you, you guys check these out for yourself. I, pr I pray to God that you guys take what us preachers say, write down some of these scriptures and study them out for yourself. That, that, that's really how it works. You have to, have to have your own relationship with God, amen. Proverbs 27, and let's look at verse 19. Proverbs 27 and verse 19 says, As in water, face reflects face, so a man's heart reveals the man. Wow, that's pretty powerful, isn't it? What, 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 your heart is who you are, amen? Isn't that cool? Let's look at uh, Proverbs 17 and verse 22. Check that one out. Proverbs 17 and verse 22, it says, <clears throat> A merry heart, what? A merry heart 
does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Watch out now. Watch out now, man. A merry heart. Now, we, we know that, and, and a lot of times we try to act like we're married, or, or we're married, or we try to act like we're merry. We try to act happy, and we're really not. It's not really coming from the heart. Our heart needs to be merry. We've got to go to our heart, amen? We've got to realize how to go to our heart. We've got to take enough time to quiet down, be quiet, listen to the Spirit, go to our heart, and settle down and find out what's really happening in our heart. Now, when we look at some of the de definitions of the heart, and there's so many, I'm not going to get them all to you today, but here's part of them. Uh, the heart is the sphere of divine influence, the center of one's being. That is a big deal. The sphere of divine influence. That's how God gets to you. Now, that's a big deal. You think your heart's a big deal? I think it's a big deal. And man, that is so awesome to, to, to realize that and to see that and, and to, to, to experience that. Um, it's, he's the one talking to us. It's the center of one's being, the chief organ of physical life. It contains the hidden man. It's the real you. It represents the true character and it's the seat of our inward life. Wow, there's a lot of stuff there about the heart and uh, I can't go into all of that stuff today, but I, I just wanna really, really talk about one part of our heart today that's very, very important. You know, the heart is where Jesus lives. Come on now. The spirit of the living God lives in your heart. That is an awesome, awesome truth. And um, I know we're probably preaching to the choir here. Many of you know this. Many of you realize it. Hey, look at there's Don Whiting on there. Hi, Don. Good to see you. Joyce, uh, good to see you, Joyce. Judy, Jim. Jim Whiting's on there too. Wow, what a deal. Our heart's where Jesus lives. Our heart, now you gotta watch this. Our heart can go off. And how, what, what is it? If Jesus lives there, how come our heart isn't perfect? Well, he lives in the perfect part of your heart, amen? He makes that part of your heart where he lives perfect. But you have heart issues. We have things in our heart that, uh, <coughs> that are askew. Old things in our heart. We've writ written things on our heart by old issues, old things that have hurt us. Um, man, all these things happen. We take these things into our heart, we leave them there, and then we have to deal with them later. They manifest at a later time. Come on. Uh, our heart is where our strength comes from. Oh, you ever think about that? Come on, how many of you need some strength to deal with the stuff that's going on in the world right now? I'd say we all do. I'd, I'd say we all need some strength, amen? Now, you know that Jesus is our strength, amen? You know that? Everybody knows that? In these times, we need to know where to stand and where not to stand. We, 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 we need to know. We must have heart strength. Come on. You, you always hear that. Well, that guy's got a lot of heart. Come on, yeah, that, that, that guy's got a lot of strength. You know, he can stand up, he can do these things. We need that stamina to hold up. We need that stamina of Jesus Christ to stand in these times. We can't quit just because we're tired. We have to go on and finish the race. I, I'm hearing a bunch of amens out there. We've got a couple people in this room. And you guys know if, I, if you say amen, I preach better. So I'm going to say it one more time. Come on. We cannot just quit because we're tired. We cannot quit because we're just tired. We have to go on and finish the race. There's a time to quit. And when you quit, it's when your race is finished. Amen. Come on. You got something done? Get it done and go on to the next race. Hallelujah. That's awesome. We can't quit now. We've got to have some heart. Now, I'm going to talk to you today about um, one of my best friends. 
Of course, my wife, Mona, she's my best friend of all. But I have another best friend, and her name's Molly. And some of you know Molly. She's my little dog. She's our Karen Terrier. Uh, she is a, quite the dog. She's an amazing dog. Uh, um, she is the, the one that I spoil. My kids are jealous of her because I didn't spoil them, but I spoil her. Isn't that true, Josh? Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. And so right now, I, I want to show you a little picture. And uh, Josh will hone in on this on the camera. And uh, I'll show you a little picture here. And uh, this is of Toto. That's Toto and Dorothy and on the famous movie you all know about, right? You all know about that movie? Hmm? Remember the movie, The Wizard of Oz? Famous movie. And that little dog is a Karen Terrier. You can, can you see it good on there now? Can you guys see that? Can you hone in on, on that little Toto's face? She looks, uh, that dog is a male, but he looks just like Molly. Our dog Molly is a Karen Terrier. In fact, we did a, um, a little outreach here at Halloween one time, and we did a, a theme of the Wizard of Oz, and Molly played Toto. And, uh, that, you know, I told people we had the real Toto. Molly now is 15 years old. She's a diabetic. We have to give her two shots a day, and, uh, but she's still happy. She's blind. She can't see where she's going, but she's still a happy dog. So we, we still uh, have her, and she's part of our family. And uh, you know how it is with these dogs. We love them, and they're our pets, and they're awesome. But I just wanted to show you that picture to show you a Karen Terrier. Now, they're pretty cool dogs, I'm telling you. They're very cool dogs. They have a mind of their own. They're not little poodle lap dogs that just snuggle up to you. They're not that. They'll snuggle up to you for about two minutes, and then they're off doing what they do. But uh, they're awesome. We love them. They're smart. They're incredible. And so I love these Karen Terriers. Amen? And uh, that dog looks just like Molly. So I'm just thrilled about that. See... The heart of a Karen Terrier is what I want to talk about. Those dogs have heart. We have two big dogs that are Colorado Mountain Dogs. They're big uh, um, Great Pyrenees and Anatolian Shepherd Crosses. Frank, our big dog, he's old too. He's about 12, but he's still, he's still healthy. He can still chase rabbits and deer, but when he does, it just takes him two hours to get back home. But... Uh, but Molly is not afraid of Big Frank. Frank weighs 180 pounds, and, and if Molly just snarls at him, he just goes away. He doesn't bother her. He, he could just squash her with one paw. He'd just knock her down to nothing. Molly's a little tiny dog. You know, she was kind of a fat girl for a while. She, was, she probably weighed 25 pounds. But... Uh, even at that, to 180, there's a lot of difference. And that dog is just the boss. She's the boss of all dogs. Our, our other dog, uh, Summer, I don't know what she weighs. She might be, maybe weigh 100, and, 100 pounds or something. I, I don't really know. But um, also, she's the boss. She's the queen, man. She is the alpha dog at our house. And she is in charge. But she has such heart. She has such strength. She is not afraid of anything. Now, the only place you can get that kind of heart is from Jesus. You can't conjure this up. And I'm not telling you here to make your heart strong. I'm not telling you that at all. I'm telling you to go to your heart where, where Jesus lives and let that part of you give you the strength that you need in him. Does that make sense? But that, those dogs are so amazing. Um, these dogs are actually trained, these, these little uh, dogs that, that generally weigh from 15 to 20 pounds, generally. There's a few bigger ones. Some of them go to 25. But these little dogs, they're trained badger hunters. Now, I don't know if you've ever been around a badger, but they are mean animals. Badgers are mean. I mean, they are mean. They have teeth, teeth like razors, and they all, they'll just tear you up. 
Man, you don't ever want to tangle with a badger. They'll tear you up. They are nasty animals. And they dig big holes on my son's ranch. Adam's got a ranch and uh, these dang badgers will get in there and they'll dig a hole that big and they crawl down in that hole and you know, make their home down there. And, and his horses will fall in them and you know, his cattle will get, you know, can, can trip and break legs. They can do all kinds of stuff. So when you get badgers on your ranch, you have to get rid of them. And he was looking to get rid of them. They're really smart. It's hard to hunt them. It's hard, it's hard to get them, uh, you know, by trying to eradicate them, by shooting them or anything like that. So Adam called a, a, a guy that he knows. And this guy came out to eradicate those badgers. And he brought Karen Terrier dogs with him. Little Karen Terrier dogs. And I'm thinking, that dog is no match for a badger. Well, the deal is, is that they don't really fight them. And it's true, they're no match for them because that badger just eat their lunch. They just eat them. But what they do is those dogs have so much heart that they don't have any fear of that badger. They'll crawl down in that hole. Those dogs, will they're, they're small enough to get in that badger hole because they're about the same size as a badger. And they'll crawl down in that hole. They'll grab that badger by the neck and they'll gra drag that badger out. They'll drag that, that badger out of that hole and then the, uh, the badger hunter will take care of business and eradicate that badger. Now you people that are animal lovers um, and people that are worried about that, don't worry, it's part of nature. It works out great because then the, the um, ravens can eat that badger and it'll be a good thing. So don't worry about it. So <laughs> it's called the food chain. But uh, I know I'm scared some people, but don't, don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry, Dorothy. I know you're watching. But don't feel sorry for the badgers. They're, they're not cool. But uh, that Karen Terrier has so much heart that he wants to drag that badger out and give that to that guy and then that guy takes care of him. All that dog wants to do, now hear me, all that dog wants to do is please his master. Hello? That's all that dog wants to do. What a heart. What a heart. He's getting, they got heart. They won't quit. They will give their life, even if they lost the battle, to please their master. They don't care. They will bring that badger out. If that badger turned on them and got them, it could happen. They don't care. They're not afraid. They won't quit. That little dog will fight a badger. That little dog will fight a 180-pound, uh, huge, white, polar bear-looking dog. They will fight them. They don't care. They have heart. I'm talking about a heart. They have heart not to quit. They have so much heart that it's unbelievable. Now, the other day, I was... Uh, in, uh, in our house and I watch that little dog and she, you know, I watch her make sure she's breathing all the time, you know, because you never know. She's old and she could check into heaven. We released her and we told her if she wanted to go into heaven that she could. But I really believe that that dog wants to not, not to leave us. I think that's why she hasn't passed away yet because she's got so much heart that she wants to be with us. And she wants to please us, you know. She still wants to do that. And uh, that little dog quit breathing. Now, I didn't have a stethoscope. You know, I didn't, I don't know how to check him and do all that. But I know that little dog lost her, her air. And I'm telling you what, I don't know what hit her. I don't know what happened. But she was so weak but she jumped up, I'm not kidding you, she jumped a foot off the ground, no exaggeration, and landed on all fours and just was shaking it off. I believe that dog has so much heart she shook off death. Now you might, you, you might think I'm crazy, but I saw that with my own two eyes just the other day. I watched that, the heart of a Karen Terrier, the heart of a Karen Terrier coming 
coming to life and, and fighting off death. Let me tell you what, that's what kind of heart you have inside of you. You can ward off death with your heart. You are so strong in Christ that Christ in you, the hope of glory, the power of God is inside of you and you can ward off death. Let me tell you, you can ward off sickness. You can ward off the virus. You can ward off any of this stuff if you go to the heart, part of your heart where Jesus lives. You gotta live out of that part of your heart. You gotta live out of that place where he sustains you and gives you power, love, and a sound mind. See, all these great scriptures that we know, they don't work unless they're coming from your heart. That's why you have to believe in your heart. That's why you have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. That's he's your Lord. Let me tell you what, we believe in him being the Lord of our life. The Lord of our life. That's where that comes. That's where that comes to pass. I mean, I know people right now that don't have jobs. There's people that are having trouble. There's people that are having problems. We prayed with a bunch of people at uh, Pray Colorado yesterday uh, with our friends Joe and Stephanie. And um, we prayed with them. And there's people hurting, man. There's a lot of abuse going on right now in these homes where people are together too much. (laughs) And they're, they're, they're beating each other and they're knocking their kids around and all this stuff. Well, we pray against that. But let me tell you what, if you live from that strong part in your heart, you're gonna know, you're gonna know that you have strength through this thing and you're not gonna fight the people you love. Come on, we need to go to our heart. We need to find out what's going on in our heart. And if there's things that you're dealing with, when you go to meditation, when you, when you sit down and you stop and you seek out the Lord and you listen, you take time to be quiet. Take time to hear your heart. Take time to sit on your rock. I do this all the time. I have this rock on our property where I go and hear from Jesus. You know, I can go to my rock from anywhere. I can go to my rock from Uh, If I'm on an airplane, I can go to my rock in Africa because that's where I hear from Jesus. That's where I meditate. That's where I I calm down and just listen. Calm down and listen to him. Not not just looking for something, but just listen to him. Just listen to him. He sits on the other rock adjacent from my rock and talks to me. He gives me the answer. I can have the answer to anything. You can have the answer to anything. It feels... Calm down and be quiet enough to listen. Let me tell you today, you need strength to get through this mess. They shut down the world in a matter of days. They did. They shut the world down. Let me tell you what, you need need to be strong through this. You need to be strong. You need to know who you are like you've never known who you are. You need to know Christ in you, the hope of glory, like you've never known before. You need to hear that. You need to have that tenacity of that little dog. Let me tell you what, that little dog knows who she is. That little dog believes she's strong. Come on, what do you believe? You believe, well, I don't know how we're gonna make it. No, you will make it. If it's financially, if you're you're having a hard time, if you're not being able to work right now, let me tell you what, your God will take care of you. Go to your heart. Listen to God. Listen to Jesus there. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you the wisdom to pull through. He'll give you supernatural ideas. Supernatural ideas to get you through this valley. And I, and I say this a lot, but I, I, I love saying it. Yay! We say yay, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We are not afraid. Amen? Are you afraid? Don't be afraid today. Don't be afraid. Cast a perfect love, cast out fear. You are perfectly loved by God. I want you to know that little, that little dog that fought off death is no different than you. That little dog, I watched her fight death and she won. She's still alive this morning when I left. She was, she was fumbling around there <laughs> trying to do something, but uh, she's still alive because she wants to be. She has that tenacity. Where's that tenacity come from? It comes from the Jesus in you. That tenacity comes from that place where you live the center of your being, that place where you know that you know that you know that Jesus lives. 
you can go to him. He'll answer you. He'll bless you. He'll, he'll do everything for you. I'm telling you what, that's what kind of God we have. He, he takes care of these things for you. He takes care of them. Do you trust him? Can you trust God in this time right now like you've never trusted him before? As that little Karen Terrier trusts uh, trust her heart, she trusts her heart. She knows that she's going to win. When she fights a badger, she knows she's going to win. When those, those hunting dogs fight badgers, they know they're going to make it. They trust that. Do you trust God as much as a dog can trust their heart to beat a badger? Come on. Come on. What do we have? We have something. We, have, we are more than conquerors. I, I, I want to encourage people. Man, we say yay when we walk through this valley of the shadow of death. Let me tell you, what that, that's what this is. It's the valley of the shadow of death. And, you know, I, I, I fear no evil. Come on now. What does it say? He's with us. God is for you. Who can be against you? You can't lose this thing. We need to go to the scripture and believe God. We need to go to our heart where our strength is. See, the strength is not, is not in your head. The strength is not in your opinion. The strength is not that you think you know something. The strength is not, is not in what you've learned. The strength is in him. The strength is in your heart. We need to have the heart of a Karen Terrier. We need to, 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 to release that, that, that power that's in us. Now, something that I want to uh, tell you that I really, really feel in the spirit, that this heart is where the great awakening is coming from. This heart is where the outpouring is coming from. It's not coming out of heaven. It's coming out of you. And this heart that we have, that's full of the strength and the power to overcome death. Let me tell you what, that little dog knew she could overcome death. She did it. Come on, you can overcome death. Jesus did it for you already. He overcame death for us. You're never going to die anyway. People are afraid of dying of the coronavirus. What are you worried about? You don't die. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You just change. Hey, man, it's not about death. We don't die. There's a, death is a bad thing. Death means separation from God. We will not be separated from God because God is with us. He's for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Nobody. Only God gives us that strength. Only the strength of Jesus. Now, I want you to know, all of you that feel weak, all of you that feel meek, all of you feel like you can't make it, that strength of Jesus makes the strength of the Karen Terrier look like nothing. That strength raised Jesus from the dead. Come on now. That's the power of God. That strength raised Jesus from the dead. That strength broke the addictive spirit that I've had in my life. It broke it and it cast it down. How do you stay sober for 34 years? You don't, you don't stay sober for 34 years because you have great uh, <laughs> tenacity. No, that's not it. It's Jesus. It's, that, it's his tenacity. I'll go there. It's his power. That's what breaks these things. What is going to, wh wh where are you at right now? I want you to go, I want you to take a little time. I'm encouraging you to take a little time this week and go to your heart. Go to your heart and, and talk to him. And then be quiet and say, Lord, what do you want to show me? He'll show you your heart issues. And all you have to do if you find one, you have to send it away. Give it to God. I hand them to Jesus. When I'm sitting on my rock, he shows me a heart issue. I take that thing literally and go like this. Here you go. You can have it, Lord. He takes it from me. And then what? We have to fill that void up with something from the word. We have to fill that void up with the goodness of God. We have to fill that void up with the strength of Jesus. Jesus is with you. He's for you. He's not against you. He's empowered you beyond anything you could ever think or imagine.
man, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this right now, man. We're walking through the valley, but I guarantee you what, we're coming out on the other side. I'm excited about the people we're reaching. I'm excited about the, the love of God, the unconditional love of God being preached, the, the grace and peace of God being uh, uh, demonstrated throughout the world. We have a lot to give. You have so much to give. Now I just encourage you, whatever spot you're in, whatever spot you're in, go to your heart. Just go to your heart. I just told you how to do it. It's so simple. Be quiet. Get in a quiet place. Be quiet. Just you and no phone. No pool, no pets. Come on. No, no nothing. Just you and him. Take the time. And then if you don't hear anything, take more time. And if you still don't hear anything, take more time. Let me tell you what, I hear people saying, I do this. Well, I tried it for a half hour and it didn't work. No, you, didn't. you never got yourself quiet. You need to quiet. You need to relax. You need to close your eyes and sit back and listen to the Lord Jesus. He's for you. He's not against you. You guys have something, man. I am so excited about what you have. Amen. We're the church of the living God. If the strength isn't being manifest through us, what do we have? What do we have? I mean, we're the church of the living God. We are the body of Christ. Come on, man. We've got, to, we've got to manifest the strength. We've got to show people that there is a way. There's a way where it looks impossible, but it's not, it's not impossible. All things are possible. If you can believe... All things are possible to those that believe. Do you believe? Let me tell you this. Do you believe you have that kind of strength in your heart? Let me tell you what. That's the only way it works is if you believe it. You believe it. Just believe it. Say it with me. Say, Lord, I believe it. Amen? I know there's people watching that uh, maybe don't know Jesus. And I, I want you to know it's so, so easy to receive him. It's easy to receive him. He made it so easy for us. He just, he just made a way for us. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died on the cross and God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. That's what it says. That's a promise that I receive and I believe. And then you surrender to him from there on, amen? Surrender to his strength. You know, in, instead of surrendering to our weaknesses, let's surrender to his strength. His strength will hold you up and get you through the valley. So let's, let, let, let's pray this prayer today. And you can speak this out loud. Let me tell you what, the prayer doesn't save you. Believing it in your heart and confessing it with your mouth does. I choose this day to receive the Lord Jesus as my Savior, as my righteousness, as my peace, and as my joy, as my whole entire life, the Lord of my life. I relinquish my idea of that I'm in charge of my life to letting Jesus be in charge of my life today. I trust you, Lord, and I believe you. Fill me with your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen? Come on. That's, that's so easy that we can get it. I'm excited about this. I hope my little Karen Terrier uh, analogy helped you a little bit because that is the power. That is the choice. That is the good thing. That is the way that it works, amen? It's an incredible, incredible thing. Uh, we love you guys and we bless you. Um, I'd like to say hi to Kevin, and Kevin, yeah, and Stephanie, uh, Stephen. Wow, look at there, Stephen. How you doing, man? Uh, Jennifer, Luke, Luke Hodge, awesome. Um, there's... Uh, Sam and Vera, did I already say hi to them? Katie, hi Katie. Wow, look at all these people watch. Candace, look at there's Candace. Scott, Scott Johnson, how you doing, brother? Bless you. Amen.
There's Tony Juban. How you doing, Tony? I haven't seen you for a long time. Bless you. I hope we're, uh, we're blessing you being on this. Now there's Ruthie, man. There's Ruthie up in Washington watching us. Hi, Ruthie. Let's talk sometime. Good to see you. Good to see you on there. there there's uh, Edie. Good to see you on there. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at all these people on here. There's Jesse. Hi, Jesse. I didn't know you got up yet this morning. Good to see you. I'm just messing with her. That's my niece. I can do that to her. I hope you're doing good, honey. There's Dave Winder. What a deal. There's Ricky Walmack. That Josh, Ricky's on there. You should step up here and say hi to him. He's one of your old buds. Courtney, there's Courtney. Yay! There's Courtney. Good to see you, honey. There's Judy. Man, oh man, look at there. There's Judy. I was just uh, up by your place the other day. Good to see you guys. You and Rick are doing good. Hallelujah. And Joyce, hey man. Man, I, I don't know if Jim's watching with you, but I say hi to Joyce and Jim all the way up there in uh, Cedar Edge. Bless you. Man, there's Brad. Hey, look at there, uh, Brian. He, he shared. It shows right on my phone that he shared. Yeah, let's say that one more time to you guys. He may not have been on here at first. But if you guys would share this, it'll get, a, it'll get out to a lot more people. If you just pu push that little share button and hit that share to everybody, that'd be awesome. Hey, there's Julie. Hi, Julie. Good to see you. Hallelujah. I already said hi to Miles. That's awesome. Hallelujah. I don't know how these come on like this, but they do. Uh, there's Leona. Um, good to see you, Leona. Bless you. I haven't seen you for a long, long time. The Hawkins family. Man, that's awesome to see you guys. Hey, there's Jess. Did you get the communion stuff I left at your house, Jess? I hope so. Hallelujah. And Brad, there's Brad. Yeah. Claire, I already said hi to you. Chris. Man, look at all these people. They just keep coming. That's awesome, guys. What a blessing. What a blessing. Hallelujah. We are so blessed to have you join us this morning. You know what? We care about you. We love you. I believe that this, is, this whole thing is about loving God and loving people. And we love you. And I believe that you guys have that same heart. That same heart to gather your strength up in him and walk through this valley. Amen? We love you all. We had a ball. Bless you.